too. A bit of CCR and a live shot from the Century Plaza Hotel and Spa on Burrard Street. Joining us this morning, one of my favorite guests on Breakfast Television. Welcome back, Brian Minter. What a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Let's talk about spring uh, lawn yeah. care yeah. and let's start with this beautiful grass you brought in. You know, this is such an important issue today because uh, our thoughts of lawns, what they were in the past, and they've been accused of being like a dead zone and so on, that has changed so dramatically right now and not through traditional ways. We're becoming more environmentally friendly and the types of products we use to look after lawns, but the actual types of lawns themselves are changing dramatically. Now, this is a traditional turf that you would find right here in terms of, uh, you know, that's what it looks like. Okay, it's yep, fine. Yeah, lots of BT viewers uh, nodding yeah, their heads. That's, that's my right. grass. Okay. And, uh, but these are the newer additions. And overseeding, uh, instead of applying a lot of chemicals, it's overseeding your lawn with some of the newer grasses. And what do I mean by some of the newer grasses? You know, this one here, uh, it's a type of perennial fescue, uh, and it's one called natural knit. It is the first ever stoloniferous grass that is more drought tolerant, more disease tolerant, easier to mow and look after, and a little bit aggressive against weeds, which is so very important as well. The idea is to add these by overseeding. You could do it at this time of year, once we reach 7 to 10 degrees Celsius, and uh, very quickly, uh, if you can scratch up your lawn with a, a bit of um, a hard rake, a little bit of peat and sand as a skiff over top, put your seed, rub it in, and keep it moist, and they germinate much more quickly now, a 7 to 10 days germination. Boy, will it ever improve the quality of your grass and lawn. Can and we do a little lawn care for dummies for over, a second? Course, when you absolutely. say overseeding, what does yes. that mean? Does that, that mean, mean you can add the seed on top of your... You, you can, um, but uh, rather than just throwing it on a hard surface, that's why I love to take a rake and just sort of scratch up the lawn a wee bit, and especially in bare spots, so that the roots can penetrate into the surface, and but a little bit of peat and sand acts as a little bit of a bed uh, for the grass to germinate, but also so the birds don't see and, and take as much of it. So that's really the beauty. So we want to take these two and put them in here, um, and it'll dramatically change the nature of your lawn. But this one Ooh, is the biggie yeah, right have now. A peek at this. This is uh, taking the world by storm. This is micro clover, and the beautiful thing about micro clover is, and it goes on about eight pounds per thousand square feet, and a lot of us have small lawns. You don't need very much. Um, it infiltrates the grass. It fixes nitrogen in the soil, so the grass is self-feeding. And the big thing is, if you the new technology in terms of understanding is, if you mow every two weeks instead of every week, uh, a lot of the flowers will come out. So a pollinator source for a lot of our pollinating insects, like bees, is so very important. So kind of we have this environmentally friendly green space, and that's the direction in which we want to go, which is so very important. What a wonderful way to think about your lawn as it well, it not just being a space that you enjoy or that looks beautiful that's for right. your neighbors, yeah. but helping the environment. Yeah, very much so. And the other thing that probably the most important thing you can do, and I've explained this to a lot of folks, why do golf courses and the playing fields where kids play soccer uh, have such beautiful grass and, and no weeds virtually and, and uh, no moss? Uh, it's simply because they plant in one foot of pure sand. Now, we don't have that around our homes, but we can get there by using an aerator. The single most important thing, great exercise, by the way, too. Thank you, Brian. Uh, when, you, when, you, <laughs> <laughs> when you push this into the ground, it fills up. Then when you push it again, uh, it takes the cores of soil out and uh, it opens up the turf, gets air and oxygen in your, in your ground. And then when you put a quarter inch of sand over top, works its way into those holes, really improving the, the well, the grass roots can get now get down and, and be better when we get into the drought situations. And that's a big thing too. These new grasses and aeration and sanding will allow your, and the micro clover will allow your lawn to be far more drought tolerant. When we get into water shortages in the summertime and your lawn will stay greener. So this is a very important issue. The other thing that I love is uh, using the uh, lime at this time of year. It rains so much in most of our soils. Actually putting lime on adds calcium to your soil, which is important, but brings the pH up so your lawn grasses grow a lot better. And the biggie is the moss. Everybody has moss because heavier soils, and if you do aerating, you're going to minimize that. And a lot of folks, you know, think that this is something terrible. It isn't it. It's iron sulfate. You can get it in a liquid form or a granular form. And uh, what that does when you have a couple of warm days, uh, burns out the moss and allows your grass to continue to grow. And, and Brian, you know what I love about this is I'm looking at the back and I don't see any cross no, and skull bones. You know, that's bones. so important right there. Yeah. We're, we're not putting toxic chemicals in. We're just putting, you know, basically iron sulfate 
to, to control the moss. But the idea is by aerating and sanding, we're eliminating the, the whole reason moss grows, and that's so important as well. The other thing is weeds. A perennial problem is uh, having weeds, and we're getting away from the chemicals going on to our lawn to more environmentally friendly, eco-sense type of uh, products, uh, which uh, take a little bit longer to work, a little more care to apply them, and especially when you have warmer temperatures. When you get into 12 to 15 degrees Celsius, they're going to work a lot more effectively, but we're doing it other than hand pulling for some of the tougher ones. We've got a, a very good way to be able to make sure that um, your lawn is going to be weed free, moss free, look great, and be that all important green space that is, uh, I think everybody is very concerned about. You almost make me wish I was still renting and had a big lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian Minter, with some uh, spring lawn care tips. Have fun with that. Breakfast television continues after this.